Hey what's up guys, in this video I'm going to look at DocuSign and try to figure out whether it's a good deal. I'm going to check out their balance sheet, look at their growth, profitability, and use an intrinsic valuation model trying to figure out the fair value for their stock. Alright, let's jump into it. Alright guys, so DocuSign is a company that allows you to sign documents electronically. So you've probably used it, used it these days for pretty much anything. You're probably pretty familiar with it, but if you're not, more and more people are using it. Here are some companies that use DocuSign. Pretty good customers to have guys. Visa, Apple, Uber, you know, pretty big names here using DocuSign. The bulk of their revenues come from the U.S. Only 20% come from international. Now DocuSign is definitely a first mover. They have that first mover advantage in this space with the e-signatures. But there is HelloSign, which is owned by Dropbox. Now I think this is a serious threat worth considering. You know, you can bundle your package there. You can get Dropbox for your company and get a hello sign with it so it just seems natural that way now right now DocuSign is still the dominant player but it's something to keep an eye on all right here is DocuSign stock it has done quite well over the past year going up 124 percent it's currently trading at about 206 dollars giving it a market cap of close to $40 billion. There's a little bit of short interest, a little bit of hate on the stock. It's trading at PE ratio of about 158 using forward earnings. Now that's a pretty rich valuation. We're going to need to see some good growth estimates going forward to make that worth it. So DocuSign has some considerable leverage here. 86% liabilities to assets ratio. Don't love to see that. Their liquidity ratios are not great. Current ratio 1.06, but not horrible either. It's above one. So your current assets are covering your current liabilities. They are losing money, so they have a negative interest coverage ratio right now. 33% of their assets are cash, so they do have a significant cash pile on hand. So not a really great balance sheet, uh, but not overly concerning either. Alright guys, here are DocuSign's income statements for the past 6 years. Revenues have gone from about $250 million all the way to close to one and a half billion. So that's roughly a six times increase. The nice thing is their cost of revenues have not gone up six times. They have gone from about 74 million to about 350. So, you know, just about uh, four or five times. The same is true of their operating expenses here. They're roughly 300 million in 2016. They have pretty much quadrupled here. So, you know, as you would think with DocuSign's business, their costs are not going up proportional to the, the revenues. So that is going to lead to profitability down the road. And that's why people are excited about the company, despite the fact that when you look at the bottom line, yes, they are losing more money than ever. A better way to see what I'm talking about is to divide every income statement number by the revenue in that year. This is called a vertical analysis. So you can see here the gross profit margin used to be 70%. It has increased to about 75%. So that's nice. Operating margin was about negative 47%. It's now negative 11%. So they're really on the verge of reporting and operating profit soon. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give me that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Really helps support the channel. Alright guys, so here are revenue growth estimates for DocuSign going forward. Next year they're expected to grow revenues by close to 36%. 
then slow down 27, 26, you know, 30 or so. And, you know, pretty impressive growth for the next decade is expected of the company. It is worth noting that after 2024, with these next estimates are only based on the opinion of two analysts. All right, guys, here's my path for DocuSign for the next decade. I got revenue growth from analysts. That gives me a stream of revenue. Now, the tricky part is margins. So they are losing money most recently. But again, I think they're really turning the corner, and so do analysts. I am expecting about roughly 4% profit margin next year. And I expect that to steadily increase over time. Now, I will admit this is not very scientific. It could be rough and bumpy. It could be smooth like this. It could be quicker or slower. But generally speaking, given the nature of their business, I think they'll be able to have some pretty fat profit margins eventually. But I think it will take time. So if my path is accurate, that's going to give us a stream of net income there. Now, the final step is to take that net income and subtract reinvestment needs, giving us free cash flow to equity. So I've got the reinvestments here using a sales to capital ratio. This is one way to do it. So, you know, the idea here is very simple. For every dollar of revenue that, that we're going to increase by, we need to set aside some money for reinvestments to make that happen. You know, how much? Well, we have a sales to capital ratio for the past couple of years. We're going to use that. Now, if that's true, that gives us a stream of reinvestments and then a stream of free cash flows. So let's plug these in and figure out what the company's worth. All right, guys. So I got my cash flows here. And then when I got my terminal value going to discount them all back to present value with a 9% discount rate. 9% is probably about the lowest I can go. I think for a company that's currently losing money with so much uncertainty, you need at least about a 9% return to make it worth your while. After 10 years, I'm just going to figure on a 2.5% perpetual growth rate and free cash flows. Could actually be better than that, but let's go with that. If that is all true, we're going to have a total firm value of about $32 billion or about $171 per share. Unfortunately, that would make the company overvalued by almost 17%. Now, as far as insider trading, I don't see much buying going on, a lot of selling. And yes, when you look at the number of shares involved, it's definitely a lot of selling compared to buying. So it's a slightly negative signal. You know, the stock has done quite well over the past year. I wouldn't be surprised to see some insider net selling activity. But overall, it's definitely not a good signal. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on DocuSign. So my general thesis here is, you know, great company, bad investment right now. That's that's my general conclusion. They do have a product that everyone needs, everyone uses. They're the first mover into that space, gives them a significant advantage. So they've shown impressive growth, and I really see that will continue. Now, that being said, um, at the price has really gotten ahead of the earnings. You know, that is something I don't like to see there. It's really priced in a way that it's just hard to make money as an investor. The company will make a lot of money, but for me personally, I'm going to try and wait for a better price. If that doesn't happen, that's okay with me. Uh, but that's just my thought. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.